Right, so normally we do the stucco first and then the trim, but he was gonna get it color coded, then he got an estimate for that. I forgot how much of that was. So I said, well, we can paint the stucco. So that's what we're doing today. We've already did all the trim, so it's kind of backwards. But, uh, so we got everything. We went ahead and papered stuff off on this one. Don't have to do it that way. You can do it either way. These cardboard shields around the base. If you want to save a little bit of money, if you don't have labor to do that. Uh, we just had a covering guy, so we spent a couple hours uh, masked off everything. Of course, you see here, we trench all the way around. Do your stucco, especially when you have rock. Pull it away nice, get the paint down below the lines there. Mask all the windows. The top, what we're gonna do is hold cardboard shields up and uh, do the top and then just go in with a brush when we're all done and bring it in. Cause trying to mask off the ease, you're gonna have blowouts. So it's better to just use cardboard on the top. Hold the cardboard shield up. Be careful when you're going up the wall spraying it's natural for you to want to turn that gun up, but you want to keep it going straight at the wall and then use your ladder to spray a little bit down at an angle, uh, even though you probably won't be, but you'll want to feel like you're spraying down at an angle to be able to make sure you're not spraying upward at just a little tiny bit. You'll kill the eaves and you'll end up redoing those. So you got to spray Make sure you're, oh, you're angling down when you do around the eaves so you don't hit them. So anyway, it's real easy to do. You're going to hit the eaves. A lot of guys will. And then so on the straight starter board here of where they have the patio cover, we went ahead and covered that. Again, the base with the rocks. Get a wire brush. We'll clean off all that dirt that's on there. Pull down the lights. You can leave them up and mask them off if you want, but we pull them down, it's just easier for us. So last time they did it, they color coded, so if you can see, we're gonna have, they put the slab in after it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and get that nice and straight looking. You know, we're gonna paint our pipes. We won't paint the sprinklers, but the pipes, yeah. We paint those. Keep it off the sprinkler, that doesn't look good. So go around here. All of our preps done, except for the doors. We're gonna cover those as we get there because people need to go in and out of the doors. So we do that right when we get to like say right here. One of us will jump ahead, cover the door, spray all around it, pull it back off. And then we can paint these ugly things here because these look terrible and they're not painted the same as the wall to me. So anyway, covered up our wood trim here because it's already painted. Again, if you were just doing the stucco first, you would just get paint on that wood, no problem. We're also gonna paint this garage door. Uh, I always paint these and guys go, well, you don't ever paint those because that's a factory finish. That is faded. That door is very faded. You can see it. I don't know if you can see it in the video. But it does not look very good so it needs to be cover up the windows we just shove paper underneath pieces of paper no tape on them just shove them underneath with a putty knife and then cover those up later we'll probably film some of that too hopefully i'll remember when i'm running the job it's hard for me to stop and think about filming anything so anyway that's our prep for this job uh, maybe we'll spray some XIM on those pipes there because those are getting painted into the wall, but not nothing on the sprinklers. So anyway, all right. That cord is getting painted. Want that to disappear. All right, so our new color is going to be this right here. It's called buttercream. It's a little bit lighter and will look a lot more even than what's on here right now. Let's take a look at it later. Right in this section here, I'm actually doing the front porch uh, a 
little bit tricky to do some of the arches there and not get overspray on the, on the uh, eaves. And everything needs to be cross sprayed because it's quite a bit of difference of color and the color I'm using it does not cover very good. Even though it looks like I'm putting it on very light, I'm actually putting it on super heavy. Uh, it's very, very slow with a 515. Um, I probably should have used a 617 or even a 517 for this job because it's just it's kind of really slow going to me. I just look like falling asleep almost bringing this because it's just uh, so slow. But since I did need to cross spray it, I uh, decided to uh, use a 515. Uh, didn't, I, I, I didn't have one readily available. I have to search for my tip box, and uh, it's kind of things are kind of unorganized right now in the truck. I'm getting ready to change it over. I'd like to make a removable service bed for it. So uh, maybe I'll, I don't know if I'll put that on the channel or not, but I may do that in the future. So this was a brand new tip when I started. So if you can see, there's that little fan edge on it. Um, and this isn't where I actually started. I just started videotaping at this point in the job. So I didn't get the whole video of all the spray work. I just and I mean, there was two of us spraying, so Travis was in the back, uh, spraying in the back. And then he likes to use reverse tip. Um, I always use flat tip. It's just I always use them. And a lot of guys, when they switch over to using a flat tip, they, they, they get a little bit frustrated with the, uh, when they get a plug up to take it apart. And actually, after a period of time, it doesn't take any time to do that. And honestly, you only, maybe, if you're lucky, you'll get one plug up in the job. And I think I did get a really, I did a couple miles plug up. Um, and all you gotta do with that is like just tap the uh, tip, uh, kind of beat it up to the concrete or something like that. I'll do it some sort of, sometimes I do it on my ladder. I may do it in this portion of the video. I'm not sure where it was. I had a little plug up. It was just minor. In fact, I might be doing it right here. I, can't really see it. I just tapped it on the, you know, took the tip and beat it onto the, onto the, uh, onto the, on my other video where I show how to unplug a flat, you know, unplug a flat. Um, I show that. I just beat it on the, on, on the ladder, the top of the ladder, even. And usually that takes care of it. And you just start spraying again. You don't have to reverse it and then go spit it somewhere and all that. You know, it's, yeah, honestly, it's really, it's not much different than you used to using it. Uh, and then taking it apart and putting it over and putting it back on actually becomes very easy after three, five or ten times. Uh, yeah, so I don't find any difficulty in that. The tips for flat tips are only about five dollars right now. Uh, who knows, it's pricey, you know what we're having. Maybe they'll go up in price, but then again, you know, it's a lot less than the uh, $30. But if you look at how I'm doing this, um, I actually had didn't have all, everything covered up in, uh, underneath me. I had the, the, if you can see there's drops on the sidewalk, I think I got spit, but there was a hose bib there um, I did not cover, and I did not get any paint on it, just so you know, because um, I was containing my overspray. So doing that edge, I had my fan edge, um, keeping it away from the shield. Uh, I was keeping the fan edge away from the inside, and I wasn't blowing off. The, the, the key to not getting overspray and not making a mess is that it don't blow off of anything. So if you look at how I'm doing it, I'm not blowing off of any of the corners. I'm not blowing off of any of the edges. Everything's contained. And if you just practice that, then you do that all the time, whenever you're spraying, and you just, you know, just contain your overspray, contain it all, keep it, think of contain, 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 keep it in, um, then you're going to have a lot less issues when you need to. And so you see a lot of guys just, you know, 
cover up everything and just get the pole gun out and just start spraying willy-nilly and don't worry about anything. Well, there's times when you can get away with that, you know, and you'll be fine, you know, but there's times when you can't. And if you keep the practice using um, containment as, as a thought all the time, you know, it, like sometimes, you know, when you're spraying, you know, maybe you're spraying the interior and you don't want to get paint on outlets or whatever, sometimes you'll mask them all off and then sometimes you'll spray around them. You know, you just get used to looking at what's going on around you and, you know, contain your overspray and watch what you're doing. I just blew off the edge right there a little bit. I try and not do that. Uh, and, you know, it, and a lot of guys will just blow off of that the whole way through, go around the corner and just blow right off the corner and figure if it's, you know, they got it all covered up. But then sometimes you just forgot to cover something and then you wipe it out. So if you, um, you see how I approach the corners? What I do is I take the fan, the edge of the fan, and because it's blowing, uh, I'm just saying, I can't really explain it, but because it's blowing like that, and I just did a 45. I did not hold the gun 90 degrees. I held it 45 to the to the corner when I do that. So if you watch quickly what I'm doing, uh, I do it very quick, so you can hardly see. It, it, it's things I've done. I just don't even really think about anymore. But things when I first learned how to spray, uh, I have maintained that practice and I just do it religiously without even really thinking it's just like a, a automatic thing so when I go to the corner I'm gonna go spray with my fan edge up to it and I'm gonna go uh, I'll do a 45 on the very edge and then sometimes what I'll do is like if it's a really big color difference I'll take uh, a shield and hold the oh, catch the overspray and spray the other angle uh, away from it can kind of get what I'm talking about. Uh, again, again, like I'm shielding about two inches away from the eave. And the reason I'm doing that about two inches away is because uh, if, if you're about two inches away, it, it doesn't blow under the shield and hit the eave and have that little bit of a mist on the, in the very edge of the starter board, which I don't like. I don't like any, I don't like any of the stucco color on the eve. Again, uh, you should be doing your stucco first and then the eaves, but this was just kind of a unique situation. I thought it was a great, video, great for a video. Um, it was just kind of an afterthought to do the stucco. In fact, you know, I didn't even think about asking him. I, in fact, I did. I did ask him. I said, hey, do you worry about the stucco? And he goes, oh, no, no, I just want to do, just want to do the trim. And so I just didn't question it. And I just went, okay, an older guy. And, you know, he set his way. So I figured he probably knows what he wants to do. And um, then when he got all done, he goes, well, how much would you charge to color code it? And I'm like, well, I don't color code. I only do, I paint stucco. And he goes, oh. And, and he goes, okay, well, how much to just paint the stucco just so I know? And I go, oh, um, give me price. And he thought, wow, that's a lot. And of course, everything's a lot right now. Uh, then he got a price to have it color coded, and it was about double the price of painting it. So, yeah, uh, painting stucco is definitely less expensive, and it does last a long time. A lot of people think a lot of times you can't paint stucco. You ever met people? I think your comments are um, on that. I met several people that think that you just can't paint stucco. You cannot paint stucco. And they, they think it'll ruin it. Uh, they say, I've heard things like it'll seal it up. Wow. You know, uh, if you're using flat paint on stucco uh, versus uh, something with a sheen, the sheen paints will, will uh, a lot of times try and seal up the stucco. And if you have water penetrate into it, sometimes what will happen is uh, the sheen paint will actually, it'll actually seal that stucco up and then it gets, absorbs moisture. But at some point, it'll peel. So, like, eaves, um, I, I don't like to spray eaves, or roughs on eaves with enamel for the same reason. Because uh, sometimes it will, they'll accumulate moisture somehow. Like there's all those cracks up in those eaves, moisture will get inside those, and have no place to go. And if it's sealed up inside, if moisture is sealed up inside wood or stucco, uh, and it has no place to go, it's going to pop the paint to get out. So when it gets hot, it'll steam inside of it, and it'll actually peel the paint off. 
I've had guys even tell me in some of my comments that that doesn't happen, blah, 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 whatever. Hey, look, just think about it for a second. That's what happens, okay, whatever. You can say whatever you want in the comment section, and uh, that's fine, but it uh, doesn't mean you're right. So anyway, I'm going through and shielding. It's a little bit difficult if you notice those where the stucco pops out. Uh, it's 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 almost impossible you can see it out there. It's almost impossible to keep it off. And probably I could have um, I think maybe I did have a plug up right there and I'm gonna beat it on something I'm not sure. No. No, didn't. It rarely ever happens. Maybe I get one two little ones and maybe if I'm lucky I'll have one major plug up where it actually doesn't want to spray in a spray job it, if it's more than We're one yet. generally uh, usually I'll remove the the filter the tip filter uh, about after about two to three gallons or four gallons something like that depends on the material depends on if it's strange there or not and then I'll uh, pull that filter to pull the uh, foam filter out and clean it put it back on and do a spray check on the rig uh, because you don't want to walk all the way to the wall and then all of a sudden you have a plug up. But sometimes when you just clean the filter out, you actually pick up something and get it in the uh, tip and then you'll know, you know, have a bad day when you walk, especially if you're on the left. You can take yourself all the way up on the left and then all of a sudden you're going to test it and you're like, oh no, now I got it all the way back down. So, anyway, you don't want to do that. You know, so I. I always check it when I'm at the rig. It's a, just a habit to create. You know, if you're going to do it, you just go to your spray rig, you know, clean your filter, get a little spray in your bucket, and make sure that there's no plug ups on there, and then uh, start going over the wall and then start spraying. And then, you know, if your filter is in good shape, you're going to be able to do that throughout the job and, and you, you probably don't have a major plug up on the whole job. And eventually the filters wear out and I carry about five or six filters with me. And I'm using I think the hundred mesh. And I don't use the 60, 60 mesh. Uh, those are for like when you have a 23,000 23, tip, so something like that. Maybe you can use the 60 mesh you might need to. But a hundred mesh usually is for anything else. You know, I've even sprayed like flat with um, as small as a 313 and, uh, and no water, well, virtually no water. I'm going to say very little water in the field. Less than 20 percent. So, yeah, I'll, you know, and, and still going to spray. It just depends on the material. You know, this is just the Acrobon. I've done that with Acrobon. And, uh, it's just funny, it just looks so light when I'm, when I'm spraying it in the video. Actually, it's just barely covering, but I am just, it's just like buried on this, so it's just so heavy. Uh, and then I cross it, so you can just move the cross, you know, it's, it's on there already, it's so heavy, that it's almost running to get it to cover this color. It was just a, it, you know, this color that I'm using, I think the only tint that's in it is actually um, yellow, uh, Sienna, yellow, so that's it, I mean, there's no, there's, and there's not too much of that, and it's just pure white with, uh, with uh, yellow oxide or whatever you want to call it, so it's very, very, very white, uh, yeah, so it does not cover very good, this color, it was just like you had to puddle it. Going around this, this uh, I didn't get any paint on this. Uh, again, I'm, you know, I, it's not covered. I was like, ah, I'm not going to get out masking this or anything. So, uh, guys on the island, you know, call up with Johnny. Or anything, I don't know if it's going to be but, hey, why don't you come cover this up? Uh, he's doing something else. So I was just like leaving. I'll just uh, spray around it, and then we'll go get the brush and clean it up after. So... You can do things a lot of ways. You don't, other guys go in and cover everything when they spray. Like I said, if you're used to covering, not covering, and you get around and hide it, I'm out. Like that, and you know, 
you can contain the weight. Like if I'm not breaking, I'm not, I'm not spraying, I'm not whipping, I'm not doing any kind of whipping. Which I'm paint not, you got? I'm keeping my gun <laughs> exactly uh, 90 degrees to the wall. So my gun is straight at the wall. All right, so we're done spraying. What a difference there is here. You wanted it just a little bit lighter, but on these on these areas here where you got you know these arches and columns and stuff like that where they pop out from the wall, your shields are gonna have some blowouts. So we got a couple to touch up in the east. We already knew we we're gonna have that. So I got around here, but mostly all we have to do is paint two inches of stucco along the side of the wall you take and you take your paint you send it down like 25 percent it's you have to master the technique of getting it to cover and uh, still not to too much water in it just enough so that it soaks into the stucco and covers and doesn't you know wet weather away or anything like that so by about 25 percent I think is about the trick there with water we'll show that tomorrow plus we're gonna paint the garage door uh, with water base material no oil base putting oil base on a garage door is actually a disservice to people I don't care where you live that stuff doesn't last and it turns to chalk within a year or two and then you've got that to deal with for the next one what's on these originally from the factory is a product called DTM and it's a water base and uh, the if you take a water base put it on there normally okay sometimes they've been repainted by somebody so you have to check it put a little bit of water base good good uh, good grade water base a little spot on there let it dry and check it and then uh, make sure that it's it's the correct material then try and scratch it off the next day typically if it's got the factory material on there it won't scratch off you can't even get it off there so it's on there that good so there's no reason to use oil base oil base won't stick even as good so anyway you all do what you want that's how we do it and it works really well so you can see up there we gotta cut that whole thing in so yeah it doesn't take very long it takes less time than you can't mask upside down if you try and mask up there you're just gonna have blowouts everywhere and you'll be fixing them all and you spend all that time masking. So it's easier just to paint up there with a shield, get a brush out, clean it up, and you're done. If you try and spray just willy-nilly up there, you might as well just end up painting the whole eaves again. It'd be easier. It's much better to do it way we're doing it right now. All right, I'll talk to you guys a bit later in the video. All right, so the key to brushing uh, stucco is to you know, there's there's a lot to know about brushing. A lot of guys just think you just pick up a brush and you just you know you know, just whip it around and put it on the you know well wall and all that stuff. So you know, it's dip it, tap it, pull it out of the bucket, and brush. That's typically what you're going to be doing most of the time. And then every three or four times, you're going to scrape the scrape the paint to the tips of the brush. So the the, the thing you're doing is you're taking paint. Uh, from the bucket and putting it on the wall and I've seen guys just always seem to drag it way too far and you know so you just constantly should be dipping tapping and pulling it up putting it on the wall so what I do is when I'm brushing the stucco is I have it about 25 percent reduced with water and what that does is it helps it go into all the cracks now the thing is, is a lot of times when you paint with the paint that reduced um, it's not going to cover, and uh, this is where you're, you you got to master your brush technique. Uh, you're, you're, the the way that I'm doing my brushing is and you'll see me pushing the brush right now. So I'm pushing the brush a little bit, and that what pushing the brush does is it gives you a straighter uh, cut. So putting pressure on the brush helps give you a straighter cut. Okay, and then you'll see what I do later is when I dip again, 
I'm going to go over it with real, real, real light tips. So I'm trying, the key to getting, a lot of guys go, well, you know, I can cut straight lines. You know, anybody, if you get pretty good at brushing, you start to get decent brushing, you're going to be able to cut a straight line. And that's just, that's the first part of brushing, okay? The, as you get better, it is all about being light on the tip. If you're brushing, you're pushing on your brush all the time, you're still not as a really good brush man. A really good brush man is constantly thinking about coverage. So when you're a better brush guy, what you're doing is you're, is you're able to do push on the brush less, be lighter on the tips, and let the brush release the material onto the surface and uh, and soak up the heavier areas at the same time by brushing very lightly you get better coverage so pushing on the brush you get better control being light on the tips you get better coverage and that's how i get the stuff to cover in one coat and when when you get really good with um with with brushing you can brush just about anything and, and you know i remember back years ago when I was painting in, in Montgomery Wards back, this was a while back. Okay, we we're painting in Montgomery Wards, and we had uh, Swiss Coffee, Dunn Edwards, and we were painting. Uh, I think it was Suprema, their old product. There had to, now it's I don't know Sparta Shield something or whatever. I don't know. It's a different name now, but it was a uh, Suprema was a material, and we were taking Swiss Coffee, and I was going over a dark maroon. And one of the guys is like, oh, you can't cover that with one coat. And so, I, and in fact, it was me. I think I was saying to the guy, oh, you can't cover that with one coat. And he goes, watch. And he goes over and he goes, it's all about being light on the tips. Now, I was a pretty good painter even in my, in, that was probably in my late 20s, early 30s. And I thought it was pretty damn good. You, know, you always think you're good when you're young. You know? and, and so he's like, 10 years, he was like 10 years older than me or so. It's probably in his early 40s, late 30s. And he's like, you can cover this in one coat, watch. And he goes through and he goes really, 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 really light on his tips. And he brushes it straight, brushes, cuts in the, cuts in the very edge. And he comes back and he goes really, really, really light on his tips with a brush. And he got it in one coat. Passed, looked good. And it was a dark maroon with a white. It's, it was all in the brush technique. It's all about being light, putting the less pressure on the brush, and just letting the paint release, and getting it on a heavier coat. And uh, so he's like, "You can do it in one coat." And I'm like, "And I practice, practice, regular." And after about I don't know three or four stores, I got the technique down. And then you know, then you know, then that's when you really become. Uh, excellent brush man okay that's when you're that's when you're there okay when you can cut a straight line and you can get coverage getting coverage is key you know if you can't get coverage then you're just you're just a decent brush guy you're okay but when you get to the point where you can release the paint on there and a heavier coat and get it one because you were lighter on your brush tips than the other guy and you didn't have to go back and put a second coat on um, can you imagine how much time that would save you on a job? It depends on what you're painting, but you know, uh, on some jobs, especially like uh, that Montgomery Ward stuff, where you had to walk from one column to the next. I mean, remember, remember there was, some of them had like 14, you know, 20 columns. And if you could get the brush coat to cover in one on the base and on the high part, um, you would you, you saved a lot of time. You know, it's a lot of walking, you know, to walk around that store. So. Uh, and then the boss would be happier, and, and you know, and and on those, on that, on that job, we we literally went through over a hundred people um, uh, that, that he hired, and they just didn't meet the cut he, because he was the, the the main guy was like, you know, he, he knew what he was doing, and, and if you came in there and you didn't, if you didn't know everything he knew, he was it was like you're done, and or you know. I, I was like one of the only guys who 
made the cut. There was a lot of guys who just kept getting fired. They kept watching guys get fired every day or they quit and not come mm-hmm. back. And because uh, you know, he was an elite painter and he, you know, I learned a lot from him about how to, you know, paint, make money. And uh, he taught me a lot of the business. I, I used to, uh, I was the only one there that was really good at masking. Uh, and I did graphics and stuff like that when I was younger. So I used to do those mini trucks and, and, and we used to do graphics in one of my paint job uh, paint jobs I had. So I did cars and all that stuff when I was younger. And I got into doing houses because I was broke. And I, well, I really wanted to get into doing that. Uh, I wanted to get into construction trade stuff because I just didn't like cars that much as far as uh, getting paid and stuff like that. It was a pain. So uh, I wanted to get into houses, and uh, finally uh, a guy gave me a break, and I showed him. He goes, "Hey, can you paint these bathrooms?" And, and I did it faster than the other two guys, just as good. And he's like, "Man, you know, we could make some money together." And I'm like, "Yeah, let's do it." And so and that's when it all started, and uh, that's when I got into doing houses instead of doing cars, because cars is, you know, it's it's it really. When you know how to do cars, you can do anything, but man, it's it's a tough grind to make money. And so, you know, you're working really, really hard. There's a lot of sanding, a lot of prep, and uh, not like doing houses. So, anyway, it's a uh, it's a different game. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not something I want to do, you know, for a living. It, it just at that time, it was really hard to make a living doing that. So it was like, yeah, I'm out of it. And people, I mean, even today, you know, guys, I, I was looking at the car business and, uh, like, when they get, get, you got paid for flat rate hour, and we used to get, you know, like, so they get, like, say, six hours to do a repair, and you get paid, you know, so much per flat rate hour, and at the time, you were charging them around $75 an hour or something like that, $60 an hour, and uh, we got... Uh, Fifteen dollars per flat rate hour, and the shop would get seventy-five or whatever. Then, what's funny is I was talking to a friend of mine who still does that, and he gets fifteen dollars a flat rate hour—the same thing they used to give us back then. So it's really just a sucky job. I think it's just—it's terrible how they're treated. The, the car painters. I come back and get the top off later. Uh, after we left, before we left there, I just really just love the car doing that. I, see it, but then we backed up and looked at it and said, no, let's get that out. A lot of times in the tops, if the tops of those pillars are way up into the eave, I just leave them, you know, you can't see it from anywhere, why paint it, make it look all nice and clean, a lot of extra work, it's not worth it. But on this house, we definitely did, because you could see it when you stood back just a little further, just, just a little bit, you could see that top of that column. Let's stop, look, learn, listen, and uh, learn a lot of things. But yeah, I painted, so the very edge of that, I painted. There's some shadows I missed there because I had to shoot upward only. And I couldn't shoot down, or I did one or the other. I forget which. I think maybe I shot downward and didn't shoot up. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, you got to make sure you get all your angles. And uh, I saw some where I did the corners. Uh, I couldn't really blow off of that, so I wanted to go ahead and go back with a brush and do it instead of using a shield and a spray. It was just easier just to go back with the brush and check it all out. I saw some parts on the arches I looked at um, and just went ahead and did that. And again, the, the hose bib was not covered. Even when the ground wasn't covered at that point, uh, the guys filled it up the draws before I was done. And uh, I just was really, really light on my tips until... Uh, so that, it, you know, so that I didn't flick anything with the brush. It's all technique, you guys. It just takes time. you got to learn it. You know, it's nothing you're going to learn overnight. So, anyway, this is, uh, you know, 35 years of, of doing this stuff. So, anyway, I think I'll go ahead and speed some of this up uh, and let you guys just check it out in a little high speed, and then uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later in the video.
Again, I didn't use a shield. I didn't have to put a drop over these. And look at how clean they are. There's nothing on them at all. So anyway, if you want to cover all that stuff up and keep doing what you're doing, that's what the setup I've got. All right, so we got the door all masked off. So anyway, we got the door masked off. Uh, last guy did this stuff here. This isn't from us. Now it's from someone else. So we're getting that all to go away. So we're using a 313. Uh, you know, you can use whatever you need to. But so we got set up. And uh, it's a brand new tip. So when you spray with a brand new tip, you want to spray a little bit further away. Let's see what our pressure is like. Because you can see there's a finger at the edges. So you want to be nice and far away so that doesn't stand out. That's how we do it. So I'm not going to spray. I'm going to use two hands here because I want to make sure I don't get any runs or anything in it. Nice and even. So anyway, I'll bring you guys back in. Let's take a look at it. And if we've got a kind of bright sun here, it's going to overexpose a little bit. But uh, there's those are actually fan edges. It's not really a finger. Did miss a little spot right in the middle. I see. When I shoot the bottom of the door, I take the gun. I go upside down so that I'm not spraying downward. If you're spraying this way, you're going to spray down. If you spray upside down, when you do the bottom edge, you're going to be spraying straight at the wall. So what a lot of guys I see do, they shadow, they shoot down with their gun angling downward and you'll miss the top edges of all the bottom of the door. And when it rolls up, you can see that. Might get away with it on stucco, but on a garage door, no, not when you're doing it right. Real nice house, high-end customer here, so we gotta make sure it looks perfect. So anyway, we shoot upward on the bottom and where a lot of guys go wrong too is they'll when they spray the bottom edge of the door you'll use the edge of your fan when you need to use the center of your fan spraying at the door so a lot of times you'll have to hit the bottom a couple of times if you don't do that because remember the center of your fan these two fingers in the middle wiggling is uh, where your most coverage is going to be you're going to have less coverage here and here okay so if it, it, your center of your fan should always be where the last pass is and the edge should overlap past that so it should be going your fan edge should be hitting the drop in this case and up here if you notice you can see that little finger at the edge we didn't try to blow all that out by raising the pressure up too high a lot of guys do that and they have their pressure up to the too high of a spot and uh, wonder why they got overspray everywhere and obviously you see we don't cover out very far there's no overspray there's lights literally what is that a foot away and that's dust on there there's no paint no paint dust overspray speckles nothing so it's all about the pressure you're using and uh, not over pressurizing and getting just the right amount where those little fan edges show just a little bit but not real heavy and then if you stay further away so if you go instead of going 12 inches you go 16 inches away when you're spraying enamel on a garage door with a brand new tip uh, you, you'll have less of an issue you will not have those fan edges show where guys will tell me oh yeah the fan edges are gonna show they won't show at all you won't see them so anyway we'll look at it at an angle whatever you want we'll, when it's dry we'll look at it really good and you won't find anything wrong at all with that garage door it looks perfect this is water base vista is carefree the best stuff they have it adheres really well to original paint on these a lot of people think you have to use oil base the oil base today is not good it lasts maybe six months to a year and then starts to chalk and then it's no good at that point that paints failing so if you use the water base you can get a 10 
12 year finish out of this garage door no problem and it'll won't even fade unless it's a dark brown or something like that it might not last about eight years when it's like dark in the a base colors or if you're using like a red or some obviously those shouldn't be using the outside anyway yeah you'll have problem with those colors too talk to you guys a little bit later let's take a look at the door try and get a cross sheen on here so you guys can see there's there is nothing to see there there's no striping none of that these guys are gonna be saying there is somehow but there's nothing it's perfect so anyway that's good so let's look around the stucco we went ahead and did the door like i said this started out as a trim job and then he goes hey i'm gonna go get it have it restuccoed and then he found out how much that was going to cost and decided uh, that wasn't a great idea so we uh, went ahead and painted the stucco, which to me is better. Certainly uh, keeps it a little bit sealed. It's not perfectly sealed, but keeps it sealed enough. Notice there's no paint on anything. It's not supposed to be the rocks. Look, there's no paint on the rocks. No paint on the bushes. Even though we didn't cover these. But that's why you use the right pressure and the good idea to use the uh, flat tips. You can do it with reverse, but use a little more material. It definitely uses up a little more material. Look at all those bushes. Perfectly clean. Sprinkler pipes. There's no dust or anything. Um, even right here where I was brushing over the top of this thing nothing not even a paint flick for my brush I mean it takes years to learn to paint like that without having to cover everything because some guys have to you know if you're getting paint on your hands so my hands look after a day painting if you're getting a lot of paint on your hands that tells you that you need to learn a little bit more because you shouldn't be getting paint on anything I should have cut a straight line on that. I usually do. That's what the guys did that side. So uh, anyway, underneath the eaves, you can see nice looking straight. Looks good. Like I said no paint on the rocks. We didn't cover these. Any paint on there? Nope. Nothing. Even these are heavy. We didn't want to move them. We moved that one but not these ones, they're very heavy. So, of course, there's no overspray on here in the plants. And we did not cover them. Because the foliage gets broken. Some customers are real picky about that. So we hosed off the back to just to get the dust down. No, no paint dust, but just make it look better. Straight lines there. All the stuff was painted, no shadows, no fingers, nothing. Okay, looks good. Another one done. Talk to you guys in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.